Hi, welcome back to the workbench. I wanted to make a, well, we'll see how quick it is, make a video on putting or installing Neutrik PowerCon True One power connectors. I have done hundreds of PowerCon, the blue and gray ones, and I went into this process pretty cocky, thinking, well, <laughs> how hard could it be? And uh, after making some pretty dumb mistakes, I decided to read the instructions and then thought, hey, maybe I'll just make a quick video so that other people don't go through everything I did. So stay tuned. We're going to make a male connector and a female connector, and I will let you know what you need to do that successfully. All right, we're going to start with the NAC3F XW, female. Um, whenever I'm doing an electrical project, uh, wall power, I like to always start with the outlet, the female end. Um, and that way, just if something really, really, really stupid happens, even if it's just me working by myself, I, I know that there isn't a male or inlet connector on there that someone could accidentally plug in while I'm working on the female end. So I always do the female end first. That's just a weird thing to think about, but hey, you know, there's only so many times that you get electrocuted before you start thinking about things like this. Trust me. All right, the next thing you should know, you know, like before you do these, I actually do recommend just reading through these instructions. Uh, it's where I learned why these were so much of a fight. Things like apply cable pulling lubricant to cable jacket. That I, The fact that they recommended it makes sense after I did one or two of these thinking, why is this so stupid? So if you have a second, read through the instructions. Take the time to do this correctly. Now. Like I said, I've done a ton of PowerCon connectors. So what you do with those, you take off your jacket, you do, you do your normal preset with these. As it turns out, you leave these two parts screwed together for the first part. You get a little bit of uh, cable pulling lubricant. I went for the, uh, the big jug from Amazon because I couldn't find a tastefully small one at a good price. I uh, I realized that the little safety cons not safe. Uh, <laughs> it just gets me all a flutter. I'll be right back. Oh, this is the first squeeze out of this jug. <laughs> it's blue. You're gonna want to have a towel ready because you know why. <sighs> all right, now that you've got a little bit of lubricant on there you can this isn't even heavy this is 14 gauge cable oh so much better this that part is a nightmare if you don't use the cable lubricant now that that's on there you can unthread the locking tab portion of it slide on your strain relief and we'll start stripping this end. The manufacturer's recommendation for how much to strip is about 20 millimeters. So we will do about 20 millimeters. Now, when you do this, you do want to obviously be careful to not cut into your power conductors. So I like to score around the cable, separate it as much as I can by hand after that, find where it's been a little stickler, and free it from its rubbery chains. Oh, oh it doesn't want to. All right. Now that we have our conductors, we can strip these down to the size that the manufacturer recommends, I guess. 
or you can, you know what, YOLO. Strip them however you want. I have found my strippers. I really love these. These are uh, Vicon Tools number five, uh, made in Germany. Just like these connect. Oh no, are these connectors Austria? Where's Neutrik? Doesn't matter. Off topic. Anyway, if you can get a hold, I buy these through eBay. I can't find them anywhere in the states. The manufacturer's recommendation for strip depth is eight millimeters. This has a very handy little scoochy slide. I'm going to overshoot by about a millimeter, knowing that the copper itself is hiding behind there. So we will do three strips of the cable. Do you see why I love this stripper? And it automatically adjusts to wire sizes between, what does it say? 24 and 10, and I can vouch for that. I've stripped all of those, or for 0.2 to 6 squared. See? Ugh, how cool is that? Now, on to the next little gotcha of these connectors, which, you know, again, you do the PowerCon connectors and you think, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much ready for whatever they throw at me. This is a... Uh, Torx, come on, Torx, T8, T, T, Ocho. Uh, the first time I looked in here and saw that they were Torx connectors, I just was like, come on. So, get yourself either a set of Torx screwdrivers, or usually, if you have a bit set, one of those will be Torx 8. Torx 8, by the way, is surprisingly small. I assume that they do that to get the proper amount of torque, minimum torque of 2.0 newton meter or 1.4 pound feet, which we're just gonna, I mean, come on. We'll surely, surely get close. Enough. All right, we're gonna do. Oh, I hate it when that happens. We've got to get our green, white, black lined up so that they go in the correct holes on the bottom. Let's see if you can see. There are. There is a load, neutral, and earth or ground symbol. For each of these, I try to start with ground, get that in there, grab your Torx screwdriver, get it snugged down. Once you have one in there, you can get the other two in. Like, oh, don't do this. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. You also, before getting to this step, want to make sure that all of these little garage doors are opened all the way. Otherwise, that's when you find out that uh, that's why the cable's not going in. Yeah. All right, that grunt is the correct amount of torque. I believe it's exactly 1.2, 2, 2.0 Newton meters. There we go. There we go. They are now all torqued correctly. That is the bulk of this project. Now, let's see how well, let's see if we have any. This is very tight, again. Sliding it back down. Most of the lubricant, which is water-based, has evaporated. 
So get these lined up and you'll see there's a little ridge here. Those want to be lined up. It will slide in. So you want to get the strain relief butt up against there. And, slide, and be careful, don't pull this too hard. If you have to, add more cable lubricant because this bottom jacket will actually pull out. And then once you get it, okay. Oh, there we are. Now, I should say that in the destructions, it says important, push and turn simultaneously. And I believe it's talking, what is it talking, why would push and turn, push and turn. I mean, I was pushing and turning. Everything looks good. Yeah, there we go. They do offer a tool for tightening this. Uh, however, I don't have the tool and I don't think you ultimately need it. But don't say I didn't warn you. I've had good luck without the tool. That cable lube, that was the important part. All right, now we've got the female side. So we can't accidentally plug this in and get shocked while we, yes we can, we totally can. I did this opposite, ugh. Because the other side has these touchable dingleberries. Ugh, man, what a train wreck, both emotionally and physically. We're gonna do the same routine over here, a little dabble do ya on the old blue ya. Oh yeah, uh, it's so weird. I've never had to do this while making a cable. A little towel. There's just no way to not get it everywhere. Okay. All right, and I will be right back, Sam. Uh, okay, thank you. Had a little, uh, little towel pile incident. We're gonna go. Oh, take this part off. All those little things that can screw you. Put on the strain relief. Strip approximately 20 millimeters. Oh boy, I gotta tell you, doing this with cable cable lubricant on really put some sport into this. I'm already cutting right alongside my fingies. <laughs> Yeah. All right, brush that beautiful powder off. Splay them apart. Back to the Vicon. One, two, three. A little bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Come to our receptacle. Make sure that all of these gates are open. You can see from the factoria, there's one of them that's half closed and that's gonna make that quite difficult. So we will prep all three of these. We are going to find our symbols. So we've got, I just jammed, don't worry. All right, we've got earth, on the bottom, and these are in the wrong direction again. So I'm gonna pull green through the bottom, get them lined up like so, find my earth again. Okay, all three are in. 
Let's go along and snug them. And then we will go back through and torque them. Egg. Correct torque. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay. That feels good. Slide the strain relief. Yeah. Be careful. Again, we're going to line up our strain relief. And you can see here why it's important to not strip too far down because you want your strain relief to be clamping down on the outer jacket of the cable and not the inner conductors. So now we've got these. We are going to find where that lines up. There you go. So you just rotate it around until it slides through. Push, push. And it says in the instructions that you need to tighten it past the yellow O-ring that we saw in order to achieve IP protection. So I assume I can pee on this now. Joking. All right. So, to summarize, will these go together? I don't know if they do. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Oh, oh, infinite power. All right, so that is a male and female Neutric True One connector. The nice thing about these, we are back. And the reason that I'm making these is because I have modified some Furman surge protectors with the companion panel jack that goes along with the Neutric True One series. So now I'm able to do things like this to this. You see where I'm going here. I can add another jumper to add in the third power strip, and then I have an Edison to whatever gender this is to feed power into the first one, and then you have easily daisy chainable uh, power strips without using up one of those plugs. I've got another video on how to make this power strip modification to install the true one. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks so much, guys.